Losers bow to obstacles. Champions make obstacles bow to them. That's the difference. Excuses destroy the credibility of those who give them. This year, it's all about identity. Who do you want to be? I was born a champion, raised a champion. I got champion in my bloodline, and all I will ever be is a champion. Now when I say champion, I'm not just referring to sports. I'm talking about being a champion in every area of your life. Winning in your business, your health, your marriage, your relationships, your spiritual life. Being a champion is the whole package. You gotta bring that same mindset into every environment that you enter. Ain't no such thing as a part-time champion. Who do you want to be? See, success starts with self-awareness, understanding your identity. Give this year a theme, and then own it. This is the year for your healing. This is the year of promotion. This is the year of abundance, of execution, of discipline, of focus, of marriage restoration. Whatever you want it to be, define it. Successful people start with identity, and then outcomes, and then goals. It's hard to breathe life into a dream when you're choking on excuses. Some seek to be discovered. Others grind until they discover themselves. Who do you want to be? If you don't make that decision, the world will make that decision for you. This year, no more excuses. Setting New Year's resolutions without discipline will only prolong your enslavement to mediocrity. Anybody, listen to me, anybody out there can be successful, but not all are willing to pay the price to do it. Ain't nothing wrong with dreaming big. But to make that dream a reality, your work ethic must match the size of that dream. I get tons of emails every single day from people that are struggling, asking me what I think they should do. The doing is where the predominant focus always seems to gravitate. Losers bow to obstacles. Champions make obstacles bow to them. That's the difference. Losers keep all their focus on the problem, the issue, the situation, the challenge. Champions guard the gates of their mind. First, they tell their problem how big God is. With God, all things are possible. See, sometimes the world gets confused of who they dealing with. So from time to time, you have to remind the world that you are a champion. In the season of trial, in the season of struggle, losers shrink. Champions get bigger, stronger, more determined, more focused. Beast mode, 120, all in. Listen to me. One person who believes in the dream can overcome an army of 10,000 doubters. Who do you want to be? You got to see the world through a lens that empowers you. You gotta see yourself the way God intended for you to be. The lens I'm talking about, that's your mindset, your belief system, your paradigm. See, people have the false perception that if they imitate the actions of a champion or someone who's really successful, that they will get the same results. This is why so many fail. Success cannot be produced with a mindset that doesn't support it. First, you gotta get your mind right. Next, you gotta get your grind right. Then go out and get your life right. To change a behavior, we must first address the mindset that produces it. Our life is just the sum total of our most dominant thought patterns. So this year will be defined by how many days you can consistently think like a champion. Now people will say, Billy, you are wrong. Success is about taking action. But what the masses don't understand is, once you align your mind with success, the actions will follow. Action is the fruit of thought. Get your mind right. See, people trying to do the actions without changing who they are on the inside. Now you can do that for a week. You can do that for two weeks, 15 days. That's why they say 15 days into the year, people have already broke their resolutions because see, they're trying to act their way into success. You can't act your way into success. You gotta think your way there. Now let me reiterate my point. Outcomes are produced from mindsets. So decide who you wanna be and then adopt the thinking patterns and the belief systems that will produce it. Now if you just address the action part alone, 
you're gonna fail. This is why diets don't work. People say, tell me what to eat so I can lose weight. See, their focus is on the doing, the action. When people ask me, what should they eat? I reply, who do you want to be? Let's get the identity right first. You get the identity right first, everything else will take care of itself. If you study the lives of greats, the Elon Musk, the Steve Jobs, the Richard Branson, the Jeff Bezos, the Bill Gates, the Mark Zuckerbergs of the world, they're all in different fields, but they all have one thing in common. They know who they are. Self-awareness, success, being a champion, it's all about identity. Who do you want to be? Setting goals without addressing your identity is useless. You can only become and achieve what you think you are. Talent is a slave to mindset. The most dominant thinking pattern shall dictate the fate of one's potential. Discipline is the fruit of the champion's mindset. The masses are merely satellites of the status quo where champions become the gravity that puts the world in orbit around them. See, to sell a dream to the world, you gotta first believe it yourself. If you study great coaches, great leaders, the first thing they do when they take over a program or a business is they address the culture, the mindset of the entity, whether that's a team or a business, a nonprofit, whatever. Vision is the genesis of all greatness. And vision is just an extension of self-awareness of who God is and who God made you to be and what God called you to do. The reason many of you out there are struggling is because you're out of position. You're not doing what God made you to do, what he called you to do. You're in the wrong profession. Inside, you know where you should be. You chase the money. Stop chasing the money. See, the money is the fruit of the calling. When you're in your calling, the money will follow. That's where the blessing is. Stop asking God to bless what you're doing and do what God has already blessed. Don't get confused. Just because you admire somebody's calling and what they're doing does not mean that you are anointed to do it. The best way to impact the world is to be yourself. If you want to be successful, Start with authenticity, then build everything else in your life around it. That's the secret to success. This is the year of simplification. Don't overcomplicate things. Mastering the basics is what produces greatness. Now I gotta keep it real with you. This year, there's gonna be some times if you're chasing massive success that you're gonna feel uncomfortable. But success requires embracing the uncertainty, the impossible, becomes possible for those who dare to embrace the unconventional. To go to the top this year, you will have to think outside the box. Losers bow to obstacles. Champions make obstacles bow to them. Now when you get finished listening to this message, I want you to pull out your goals for this year. I want you to take a pen and draw a line to every single one of them. Then I want you to pull out another piece of paper. And at the very top, I want you to write, who do I want to be? Start with your outcome. Get alone somewhere. I want you to dig deep with this question. See, questions will take you wherever you want to go in life. Wherever you want to go, all you got to do is find the right question that will take you there. You want personal transformation? You want to change your life? This is the question to do it. Who do you want to be? And when you truly awaken to that question, then you set the goals. For now, your goal is to figure out who you want to be. This is why so many professional athletes or lottery winners go broke. See, they think it's about the money. They aim for the money. See, it's not the money that you want, it's the financial freedom that you want. That's why when they get the money, they can't keep it because they don't have the identity to sustain it. Who do you want to be? I close out with this. Let us enjoy the blessing this year and not get lost in it. God is not the author of confusion. So I pray that he gives you divine clarity and revelation as to who he has created and designed you to be so that you may step into that calling with boldness this year. So I'm gonna close this message out with the word and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Romans 12, 2. I'm Billy Allsbrooks, blessed and unstoppable. To God be the glory. Beethoven, the great maestro, 
went completely deaf at the height of his career. Now he'd been playing music, composing for three decades, 30 plus years. So he knew how music worked, how the sounds and vibrations created the feelings and emotions. So from this point forward, he had to compose and conduct in his mind and imagination. He used to take a pencil and put it in his mouth and touch the piano with it so that he could feel the vibration on the inside of himself. He used to lay his whole head down on the top of the piano as he played. He connected deeply with his work. He conducted some of his masterpieces, the most deeply and intense music ever created when he was deaf and the way he did it was he went inside. Cause see, when you don't have your ears or your eyes, you have to find other ways to connect. So he went inside and found that truth that was on the inside of him. Now from the world's perspective, deafness to a composer is a major weakness, right? But if you listen to Moonlight Sonata, you hear that tension, you hear that power that he's unleashing through his fingers. Through deafness, he finally heard himself. Each one of us in our own life is a composer, a maestro, a conductor, structuring and arranging the music of our lives. And I'm not talking literally about music, I'm talking about truth, expressing it in creative ways. Whether it's in business, marriages, relationships, spiritual life, whatever it is, you are the maestro. Listen to that voice within. Your own Moonlight Sonata, your own symphony of truth and what you do. Don't get distracted. Stay engaged in a never-ending, fierce conversation with your own spirit. Truth is the chiropractor of the mind. I see you. Let her fire set your world ablaze. Sail the new seas like Columbus. Looking for the new world that has existed on the inside of you all. It's the new black. Einstein approached everything in his life with what he called thoroughly conscious ignorance, which is a prelude to every real advance in knowledge. But the wisdom in his approach can be applied to more than just math, physics, and algorithms. We can use that same mindset to discover the truth in ourselves and awaken to who our maker designed us to be. The greatest discovery ever is to discover yourself. It's been said a thousand times, to be successful, you gotta be passionate about what you're doing. But now what is passion? Let's define it. Passion is just the fire and energy expressed when one's truth is truly discovered. When you tap into it, it's a byproduct. Truth is the new black, the couture for greatness, authenticity, it's the most sought after ticket around. People will pay top dollar to come sit in the front row to see you play with feeling, depth, and unhindered truth. Now this is the secret. And you can apply this to sports, martial arts, the boxing ring, meditation, painting, drawing, starting a new company, your spiritual walk, your marriage, whatever. This should be one mindset congruent across all areas of your life. Authenticity is a universal principle that no matter what is applied in will take you to the next level. It's time for you to stop dating your calling and to get married, to settle down and have a family. I now pronounce you Mr. and Mrs. Greatness. Just as JFK in 1963 went to Berlin and stood at the walls, I stand at your walls, the walls that have separated you from the best version of yourself. The walls that have limited greatness from thriving in your life. I stand at the walls that have hindered your marriage, your relationships, those same walls that have stifled your growth, choked your full potential, and kept you in a box, a prison of absolute mediocrity. I stand at the walls today with pride and I say, tear down these walls and unleash yourself upon the world. Play your truth, maestro. I speak for the whole world. We deeply crave and connect with your music, your originality, your authenticity, the original you. Truth is the new black. So drink yourself down from head to toe with it. Set yourself on fire.
Hallelujah. And the world will come see you burn. The ivory and black keys lust for your permission to strike the strings with originality, to dance unashamed to the music that's been a prisoner of fear inside of you. Tear down those walls and unleash yourself upon the world. Just as Martin Luther nailed his 95 thesis to the door of the castle church in Wittenberg in 1517, I nail this message on the heart of all who have been too insecure to reveal themselves fully to the world. Let the revolution, the second reformation begin. This time the war is on all the enemies that stand in the way of self-awareness. All that oppose the truth inside of you and all the adversaries of your authenticity. Nothing is more seductive than a person beautiful in truth. We're all just models on the runway of life. Some of us are posing while others are projecting. The power is to the projecting. I initiate this revolution, this second reformation. This time, it's rooted in faith applied, truth displayed. This is what it's about. We don't have to go to some cathedral, some church building, and sit in a pew to honor our maker. We get up every day, drape ourselves down in this truth that I'm talking about, and play maestro. Be at peace with who God made you to be, and you'll see all the insecurities were all an illusion. There's nothing wrong with you. I'm giving you the secret right here. Oh, if you just grasp what I'm trying to tell you and then apply it into your life, your whole life will change. And once you experience it in one area of your life, you won't be able to stand living without it in every area of your life. Tear down those walls and unleash yourself on the world. Play the keys of truth, maestro. We deeply crave and connect with your music. Every word I'm saying is truth. And truth will get you high And right now I'm on cloud nine just saying this Truth is the chiropractor of the mind And what you need daily is an adjustment A treatment to come back into alignment with yourself Stay yourself, be yourself, express yourself Now the masses, y'all never reach their full potential Because they live their lives horizontally They're trapped in a linear world of nine to five Trading their time you to do is get out of that horizontal and go vertical and what I'm saying about that is first to go vertical you gotta go down down inside dig deep find out who you are find the gifts the talents the callings that God put in you then look up give him praise and then rise maestro truth is the new black sing maestro tear down those walls and unleash yourself upon the world The real you I'm Billy Osbrook And I came to change the world Blessed and unstoppable The second reformation To God be the glory There was a seven year old boy On his knees praying before bedtime And as he began to close his eyes He was brought up into heaven And when he got there all he could see was miles and miles and miles of warehouses and filled with curiosity. He asked God, what's in those buildings? God smiled and said, come, let's see. And as he and God walked through the massive doors and entered these buildings, all he could see were storage units and huge containers. Each one having a name on it that he recognized. He saw his little brother's name, his little sister's name, his mother's name, his father's name, his uncle's name, his cousin's name, his classmates' names, his teacher's names, all the people at church. He saw all the names on these containers. So he asked God, what's in there? God smiled and said, come. Let's see. He took the little boy by the hand and walked over to the containers and one by one began opening them. And he said, son, these are all the gifts, blessings, victories, breakthroughs, healing, happiness, peace, and abundance that I want to give to my people if they would just believe. 
go back home, son, and tell them all that I have for them. Tell them just how much I love them and that with me, all things are possible because I, God, will never, ever, ever fail my people. All I ask of them is to believe. Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go, throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Religion won't change your life, but faith will. Our objective is not to have faith, it's to become it. God still moves mountains. Faith is oxygen. Don't let your dreams suffocate anything outside. The promises of God is just a temporary illusion. I dare you to believe. Faith is your weapon. And it's time for us as believers to go to war. Now I want to clear something up. Hoping and wishing ain't the same thing as trusting God. There's three kinds of faith. Hope, faith, and trust. Now hope is, I hope there's a God up there. I hope he has the power to change the world. I hope he loves me enough to intervene on my behalf. Then there's faith, the next level. And faith is, I believe there's a God up there. And I believe, I have faith that he has power to change the world. But I hope that he loves me enough to intervene on my behalf. 99% of the church body as a whole resides in the first two levels of faith, hope and faith. This is why the church today is functioning in limited power. Now the third level is trust. And this is where the power's at. Trust is, I know there's a God up there. I know he has the power to change the world. I know he loves me enough because he sent his son for me. And I know he will not fail me and he will intervene on my behalf. And I trust him enough to step out and do something. This kind of trust is what got Peter out of the boat. There were 12 disciples there with God, but only one trusted him enough to get out of the boat and to walk on that water. And it's no coincidence that God chose to build his church on the rock. Peter, it's time to stop wishing, hoping, and crossing our fingers that God is going to do something. It's time to start trusting and believing in the one we serve. Prayer without expectation is not a prayer, it's a wish. It's not the length of your prayer that gives it power. It's the faith behind it. Your focus is hindering God's power. Stop focusing on your problem and focus on the God to which all things bow. Church is not some place that we go. It's something that we are. It's not a location. It's not a building. It's a mindset, a lifestyle. God did not design you to be comfortable. He designed you to conquer. And to do that, you got to get out of the comfort zone. You got to stretch. You got to reach. You got to strive for greatness. Dare to believe all things are possible. God has given you the promised land, but the only way you're going to enter it is by faith. You got to seize the moment. You got to conquer the day. For the Lord did not give us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Don't let doubt downsize God's plan for your life. Dear doubters, even before the moment of my conception, the enemy has attempted to use you to derail my destiny, to murder my dreams, and to rob me of my testimony. Your whispers, your doubt, your statements of unbelief were initiated to create hesitation in my actions, to distract me from God's plan for my life to blind me from the unstoppable power God placed on the inside of me. In my most vulnerable moments, in my times of weakness, 
You have attempted to sow your seeds of failure into my beautiful garden of dreams. Like a thief at night, planting weeds of fear to choke and smother the life out of each and every one of my grand ambitions. With your tone of sarcasm, you have told me I am undeserving, unqualified, and incapable of climbing the mountain of greatness. You have wrongly accused me, put me on trial, and cast false witness, told me lies, and betrayed me in order to convict me of a life of mediocrity for the selfish reasons of not wanting to be alone. And then I heard a voice calling out from deep inside that said you do what it takes because I will not be denied destiny is mine and I shed these tears knowing one day I will climb up out of here and I will arise and they will remember my name and know that I was alive and all this sweat and all this pain made me a champion and I overcame. I did what they said couldn't be done. I faced my fears, climbed up out of the pit, all the way up here. It's 24 seven, roll, tide, roll. Cause winning is all we know. A war for the mind, I dare to dream. The art of blindness, my mind can see. Who needs them anyway? The chase is over. Drunk with the dreams of fame and taking over. I always knew it was me, the ambitious fool. Reaching for the stars, anchoring that last day of school. Their tongues speak lies, it's all one big show. Reserved for the others, where only champions can go. I will not be denied. They will remember my name. And no, I was alive. Blessed and unstoppable. Success starts with putting the right things into your mind. And my new book, Blessed and Unstoppable, was strategically designed to align your mind with the laws of success. This curriculum will teach you the inner mechanics required to go from average to phenomenal. From living a life with limits to being blessed and unstoppable. As you follow this guide step by step, amazing breakthroughs will happen. New doors of opportunity will open and favor will begin to chase you down. Blessed and Unstoppable is a 31 day devotional on the laws of success. This book will instigate the thought process and actions required to transform your life. Each day has a Bible verse, a teaching on that day's principle, a positive affirmation, a prayer for the day, self-assessment questions, success quotes, action steps, and a powerful inspirational message. Regardless of what field you're in, Blessed and Unstoppable is your blueprint for success. Get your copy at blessedandunstoppable.com. Also available on Amazon.